and listen very carefully. I shall do this only once. Hello, my name is Letty from the Flickering Cauldron. Today we thought we'd go through the Egyptian Moon Diary with you and the Egyptian Zodiac Wall Calendar as we've had a few people ask us uh, you know what it's all about so we thought we would do this video to show you exactly what it entails so I shall just put that to one side for a second and we shall go through the book first so firstly we have a nice little introductory letter from myself and Chris uh, who writes the diaries with me so we do this together and then on our very front of our book we do have now a nice big following in the United States starting in Australia and uh, Canada as well and into Europe so we thought we'd do a nice little time zone map there to help them with their times because this is GMT uh, adjusted for BST diary um, and then uh, you know moving over we have uh, the first page is just the full year's calendar and then into a nice map here uh, of ancient Egypt showing where all the capitals were what dynasty they sat in and who ruled that city at that particular time um, and it, it kind of will help you when you go through the diary um, it does go hand in hand with the Egyptian timeline it just tells you all the different dynasties their periods they were in and the dates that they actually ruled so that will also help you understand so moving uh, swiftly on into the book itself so first of all flickering style we have uh, the history of ancient Egypt obviously it's only within uh, a few different uh, a few pages because to write the history of Egypt would probably take an encyclopedia which we'd love to do but you know this is only a diary um, and then we've done a story here on the Dendra Zodiac Stone, which is what the Zodiac is actually based upon, um, which actually sits in France, um, in the museum there. And then moving on to the Gods of the Zodiac, which uh, is the Zodiac based in this diary. So how this will work is, so say you were born in, in uh, January, you're a Capricorn, so you would then be um, Amun-Ra. Um, if he was born in between the 8th and the 21st. So Amun-Ra is actually two gods put into one, So, which would be myself actually, so that actually makes sense, jack of all trades, quite like that. So that gives you uh, an insight into him, uh, zodiac style, it gives you uh, some traits um, as to um, how, how you are underneath that god. So very interesting, so we have one two, three, that it's 12 of them for the whole year. The dates are there, so you can work out who you, who you uh, fall underneath. And then um, the calendar of ancient Egypt. So that's quite an interesting story uh, to have a read on um, before we actually move into the diary itself. So the front of the diary for every month, um, it tells you which gods and where they fall. So say for January, so for the 1st to the 7th is Happy, the Nile God, uh, Amun-Ra from the 8th to the 21st and Mart from 22nd to 31st. So it also shows within the calendars uh, itself. So the calendar is just a calendar, a diary, but it also gives you all the moon phases every month, every day, um, telling you what moon phase it's in, what star sign it's actually in, um, what time it enters, sunrise, sunsets, moonrise, sunsets, and also tells you all about your bank holidays, uh, gives you planetary times as well. And um, as you go through the diary, it will also give you um, if there's any eclipses, um, or anything planetary, it will actually tell you within the diary itself. So quite a nice little space there where you can write in your notes. Um, and then each month at the beginning, um, it will tell you about that God of the month. So in January, we've, we've used Happy, uh, the God of the Nile floods. It tells you all about him uh, rather than the Zodiac um, and uh, gives you a good insight as to why he was worshipped, who worshipped him uh, within ancient Egypt. 
So also when the zodiac changes throughout the month, it will tell you so within your calendar. So we've uh, throughout our book, we've put in different stories for you. So our first story in January is the sacred city of Abydos. Um, so again, we've got Abydos temples, absolutely amazing, beautiful, if you could ever get to go there. Oh my goodness me, honestly breathtaking. So again, you've got your calendar. Um, we, you know, we've put all, all the artwork that is in the book, the Egyptians artwork, artwork in themselves. So we've actually used their own um, and, um, you know, put it within for, for you to, uh, to, to look at. So here we've just got a fascinating Nile, all about the Nile really, how it was used within ancient Egypt. And at, at the end of every month, we have a, a notes page, so you can write whatever you need to write for that month. So moving on to February, calendar works exactly the same. Um, and um, Amun Ra is, it tells you all about how um, Amun and Ra became one. Uh, so that's quite interesting as well. And then moving on, you've got Abu Simbel um, again. Uh, this was a place that was actually relocated. Uh, what a feat that must have been, and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, when you're standing in front of it, it's almost like you are, you know, in a movie set somewhere. It's just unbelievable. Uh, the beauty, the technology of how they actually done this stuff was amazing. Um, and then we have the uh, Book of the Dead, which was called uh, Book of Coming Forth by Day, um, which is very interesting. It was, uh, the Book of the Dead is basically exactly what it says. So, uh, whenever anybody died, um, they had their own story of how they would go through the afterlife, and it was uh, made into a book, uh, normally on papyrus or in coffins or on the walls of their tombs. Um, guiding them through uh, the afterlife um, safely um, to the other side. So, very interesting story there for you to read about. Again, your notes. March, then we've got Osiris, god of the afterlife. And then we have a story of Umseti, which is a tale of a reincar uh, reincarnated priestess uh, from the Temple of Seti in Abydos. As she was a young girl born in 1904, um, had a terrible accident at the about the age of four, fell down the stairs and um, was presumed dead. Um, came back to life, but as she did so, um, came back with reincarnation of a priestess that um, lived back in the time of uh, Seti. So it tells of her story all the way through to her death. Um, it's quite lengthy, but it's very, very interesting. I would have loved to have met this lady, just never got the opportunity before she died. Um, again, her story could fill up a whole book. So being as it is a diary, we've limited it for you a little bit, but very interesting. And into March, um, obviously the, uh, the scarab beetles are quite famous for Egypt. So it gives you the story of the scarabs. And then we have Thoth, another bit, one of the other gods. And then the lost city, uh, golden city of Aton, uh, which is um, basically found uh, to the uh, September uh, last year. Uh, they have been looking for it forever. Um, it belonged to uh, one of the pharaohs, Amen, uh, uh, I can never pronounce this properly, uh, Amenhotep, which is the father of Akhenaten. Um, it was um, one of the capital cities of Egypt that was lost to the sands of time. They have found it, which must be, uh, it's, it's the find of ever since Tutankhamun, I should imagine. And they are still renovating, um, bringing back the city to life. So hopefully, if we do another Egyptian diary, uh, we can keep you updated with uh, all the different things going on there. So then we have a story about the bust of Nefertiti. And then back into May, Horus. 
Valley of the Kings. Valley of the Kings, huge. Uh, at the moment, they have 65 tombs. Um, so we've given you a list of everybody that's in the tombs, um, literally up to date as to what we could get it to anyway. Uh, but definitely one to go and see if you ever go on a Nile cruise. <coughs> Into June, set, another god. And then Luxor, which is the ancient city of Thebes. Well, Thebes is the ancient city. Luxor is the modern city now. And then we have the Temple of Karnak um, and the story there. Another beautiful place to visit. Into July, Anubis. God of the Dead again. Then we have the famous pyramids in Giza and the Sphinx. I give you the story there about that. And then into Saqqara, um, which uh, where the first pyramids were actually built um, before they moved it, you know, into Giza. Um, and now they've uh, just managed to find um, some entrances where they're finding new tombs, um, new mummies, artifacts every day. So again, that would be uh, quite interesting to uh, keep updating you in the new Egyptian diary. Um, then into August, Gib, and then the Oasis of Siwa, which is uh, sits. Uh, not far away from Alexandra, to be fair. Um, Cleopatra used to go there for her bath. Uh, long way to go, really, but, you know, each to their own. Uh, which was here, actually. It was a hot spring pool. Uh, there's lots of salt mines around Siwa as well. It also sits in the middle of the desert. One of the most amazing journeys I've ever taken, I have to say. Um, when I went there myself, also has the Oracle Temple of Amun, which again is another story all on its own. Um, Alexandra the Great visited there uh, to, to, to talk to the oracles that resided there. Then we have the Valley of the Golden Mummies in another o oasis called the Bahuria Oasis, which um, is also an interesting place to visit. Then moving on to September, another god there. Preserving the Dead, we talk here about all the mummification, how it's done, why it's done, why it needs to be done. Um, and again, that's very interesting. And then we go on to the Grand Egyptian Museum, which is one of the largest um, archaeological museums in the world now, um, which opens, should be this month. It was meant to open before COVID, but... Uh, due to COVID, they couldn't do it. Um, so it will house over 100,000 artifacts, um, including all of the artifacts from the tomb of Tutankhamun, which they've never been able to display all at once because the museum in Cairo isn't big enough. So you would probably need about three months there to actually look at everything, but wow, wouldn't it be great? <laughs> Into October, uh, we have the cat goddess Bastet, very popular. And then we talk about the ancient city of Alexandria. And then hieroglyphs, how to understand them, how they understood them. Um, and we also have here uh, one of the um, obelisks that came from Philly. Uh, up the road from us here, actually, in Flickering, probably about 10 minutes drive away, um, which was brought over. So hieroglyphs don't show so much on there as they do up in um, London, but uh, worth a visit if you're local. November, which is the other cat god, Sekhmet. Not as popular as uh, Bastet, mind you. And then into Aswan, very, very beautiful location. Um, I love that picture, it just makes you want to jump in. Great. And um, they have a lot going for it there. It has quite a lot of temples there. Temple of Amada, Temple of Philly, which is just a breathtaking sight, especially if you're on a cruise and you float up to that. Um, 
you know, definitely have to get the cameras ready, um, which sits on its own island. But again, that um, it used was relocated once. They was going to relocate it again, um, but uh, decided not to. So they just raised the banks. So that sits on its own island there. It's great. Into December, last card, Isis. Let me talk about lost cities here. So this is the lost capital city of ancient Egypt that I haven't found yet, um, which is one of the first ancient cities in, in the first dynasties. Um, no doubt they will find it. They feel that they're close. It'll be an interesting find when they do. Then we have the sunken city of Heraklion, which sits off Alexandria, Thonis, and they're bringing up every day new artifacts. bottom of the sea amazing absolutely amazing and then um, it just at the back it tells you about our other publications our wall calendar which unfortunately is sold out our moon diary which is almost sold out and our new book which is companion and then it tells you about our calendar and uh, a diary uh, the calendar the calendar for 2023 and then obviously the back of the book is just the back of the book. It tells you all what's within the diary. So that's our Egyptian diary. And now we're going to have a quick look at the calendar. So which will make a love. We sell these together as a set or we sell them singly. Make a lovely Christmas present for all those that love anything Muni and ancient Egypt. So in the wall calendar, the first two pages literally tell you all about the gods, gives you the dates, tells you um, it is part of the zodiac, so it gives you uh, the zodiac description of each god, so all the traits that you would fall upon under. And then um, we've taken pictures from the book, basically enlarge them or um, sympathetically use similar pictures. So in the calendar, it gives you the four different main moon phases. It gives you your star sign, your proper star sign down the down the side, which is the Capricorn. And then it tells you here which gods fall within that month. And we've marked them for you so you know where you will stand. And it does that all through the month. Gives you all the different holidays as well. So you've got February Aquarius. Then you have um, March. April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November and December. And then the back is just our other publications for you there and our website address which is the theflickeringcauldron.com <laughs> and that's it. That's our calendar and our diary <clears throat> well i hope you enjoyed the video thank you for listening and um if you have any questions please do just drop me an email or um on facebook um in messenger and we will gladly answer them okay thank you bye bye